Hello everyone, and welcome back to my playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Last time we created our character of Toreador, and pretty much got thrown right into the deepest end of the pool with, with the life of a vampire. Um, our vampire sire got killed because we were made without the prince's decision. What the hell is a prince? Uh, we were in a theater, an old rundown theater, and we were about to be killed ourselves uh, amongst an audience of other vampires when one stood up in protest and uh, then others did, and that saved our lives. And now we are hanging out with a guy with a magnificent beard, very long and straight and luscious, while the Sabbat uh, mindless vampires are basically wreaking havoc in the area trying to kill us. Not us specifically, but like the group of vampires that were in the area. And we're basically getting like a tutorial on how to play the game. So let's continue right on. Uh, was that in here? Where are we going? Down there? What's up, bro? Hey, crab nipple this and crab nipple that and... Did you say crab nipple? <laughs> what do you say, bro? Where do you fucking say? Where am I going? Oh, here. So there's a sabot over there. A sabot. And we want to, uh... Not be noticed by him. Motherfucker, look at his arms. Ah! You have been detected. Try again. Remember to crouch by pressing the crouch key. Use a route taking you through shadows and behind cover. Well, I didn't know he was gonna fucking move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna move or what? Fuck off, dude. Should have put more points in the sneaking. I'm just gonna walk back. Didn't see nothing. Oh, hi. Keep it quiet. They're inside here. Seems that shovelhead outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry. He's probably greener than you. What makes you think that? The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. How can that be? He's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that. Big shock troops. Cannon fodder. Put him out of his misery. I'll do my best. He is a vampire, so be ready. I was born ready. Go get him. I'm on it. To engage in unarmed combat, you need to equip your fists and then attack. To equip your fists, press the melee uh, weapons key. And until your fist icon is highlighted in your melee weapon inventory list, and then click the mouse button. Oh, whoops. So, F1. Um, oh, that's not the F1. That's the F1. Bruh. Bruh. I got a tire iron, bro. You just pick up a tire iron. To equip this weapon... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the icon... This icon indicates the weapon you are currently equipped. For ranged weapons, there are numbers indicating your current reserve of ammunition. Later on in the game, you will find armor to protect yourself. Equip it the same way as the weapons by pressing the armor key, 
which is F3, until the armor is highlighted. Yep. Okay. That's the one I want. That's that. Sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Saban are going all out. You better head underground. Avoid straight bullets. Sounds like a good strategy. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. See ya. See if we can sneak up. When you're in position to perform a stealth kill, you will see this icon. Stealth kills have the advantage of being silent. Perform a stealth kill, equip your fist or melee weapon. Crouch and sneak up behind your victim until you see the stealth kill icon. And press the use key when you're on or when you're on higher stealth levels, the attack key. Oh, you don't die, boy. Can I, can I not? Going to be standing. Oh, there we go. I suffocated him with a tire iron. Not sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm going to keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them hold up. The more the merrier. It's true. The more the merrier. The more XP I get. Disciplines are your vampiric powers. The icon indicates uh, discipline you have currently selected. Uh, there are two kinds of disciplines. Passive and targeted. Passive disciplines directly affect you. The targeted disciplines directly affect your enemies. All disciplines cost a certain amount of blood from your blood pool to activate. Blood buff is another ability common to all vampires. Scroll the mouse wheel to select the blood buff and use the power key. Uh, default right click to activate it. Blood buff gives you a temporary bonus to all your physical attributes. It is useful in a variety of situations, like picking a lock that would otherwise be too difficult. Note in the least areas, you can use blood buff while picking a lock only. Okay. So we actually failed, so we do need blood buff. Open the door, please. Please do open door. Toridor of three unique disciplines. Auspects, second sight that allows you to see the auras of others. Celerity, which is supernatural speed. And presence, the mystical projection of personality, inspiring awe, fear and awe. Auspex gives you the ability to see people's auras. The aura color indicates an individual's disposition. Auspex also increases your perception, important to both the range combat and inspection feats. Use of Auspex is not a masquerade violation. There's a guard up ahead. Use Auspex to see his aura through the machinery. Scroll the mouse. Um, yeah, anyway. Once you see the guard, equip the tyrant, move forward, and kill him. You got it, boss. There he is. I will stealth kill him. Or I will not stealth kill him. Bro. That guy sucked. I think they're clearing out. There's no need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. We'll come to an elevator around the way. I'll meet you over there. Meet you there. Don't let them catch you. If I'm not there in ten minutes, call the president. Presence is the power to mystically project your personality. Presence is a passive discipline. 
Once you activate it, pay attention to the discipline timer on the bottom right of your screen. It is not a, ma a masquerade violation. There is a spot guard up ahead. Use presence to frighten him and then kill him. Presence is most effective when used with a weapon. After activating discipline, equip your tire iron to attack him. Okay. There we go. I don't see a timer. It's already gone. Celerity is vampiric supernatural speed. Celerity is a passive or time-based discipline. Once you activate it, pay attention to the discipline timer on the bottom right of the screen. Use of celerity 2 to 5 is a masquerade violation. Do not use it in masquerade areas. Uh, yeah, use celerity to kill him. with a weapon my ass. <coughs> when you can pick up an object and throw it, you will see this use icon. Throwing objects make noise that can be used to distract your enemies. There's Sabat. Crouch and find an object to throw and throw it away from the guard to distract him. Once he's away from the exit, sneak through the room and leave. It's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals about to take one for the hood. So what do we do? Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots in it will take down a human. Thanks. Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still, a kindred's gotta keep up with the times. And in modern-day Los Angeles... That means coming strapped. Useless against vampires? Well, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. I hear you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. Okay. You've been given a 38 revolver. Okay, some weapons, but not 38, have an alternate firing mode, such as automatic fire. Press the attack key to toggle it. Attack mode key. Oh, tab. Okay. Range combat, combination of perception, firearms, a feat that affects how well you shoot a gun. When you equip a gun, you will see the range combat cursor. Its spread and the speed at which it, is, it focuses is a direct result of the value of your range combat feat. There are some bottles on a crate at the end of the hall. Aim your cursor and wait for it to fully focus and use the attack to fire the gun. Uh, I need to equip the gun first. Wow. Bro, you suck. I 
finally got one. I'll take it. Whatever. Hey, blood is blood, man. Okay, guess we're taking the elevator. Do do do. I think there means uh, that here. I don't know how that guy didn't see me. But he didn't. Hey! Ow. Hey! Stop, man! So combat is not the only solution for sticky situation. You can also use your feats and disciplines in dialogue. When you're about to do this, when you're able to do this, your responses will show up in the different colors and when using higher resolutions, different fonts that are indicated below. So the first one indicates a persuasion, second is seduction, and third is intimidation. Okay. Very cool. So I got a knife. And I got... What, did, what is that? Can I, can I ask, please? I, I'm not able to have the other thing. That's it, kiddo. Just like that, and it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. That's it? It's all over? Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Parry, dodge, spin, and all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this is normal? Well, to be honest, you came at a, well, an interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla, the Sabat. Well, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred had stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. Hmm. Oh, boy. Oh, I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you got a cab to catch. Was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but nah, hell, you'll figure it all out. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's this bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> good luck. Thanks, man. Jack's a good guy. So you have ex uh, received two experience points. By pressing the character editor key, you can access your character sheet and spend your experience points where you see fit. Unspent points will stay in your available experience pool. Okay, so. That was just the tutorial to kind of get you introduced to the whole concept of the game. From here on out, it's basically literally um, going around the cities and picking up quests and all that kind of shit. Um, politicking is a prevalent thing in this game. And when I say politicking, I mean... Um, basically, you kind of have to choose uh, the different factions not factions, but like if you want to be with the Camarilla or you want to be with the Anarchs, you can kind of play both sides a little bit, or you can just kind of play for yourself. You know what I mean? Um, but that is one of the better aspects of the games, one of the more fun aspects. So this is our haven. Uh, so you can see I've already got some stuff in here because our inspection is pretty high. Normal watch. 
So that I could sell. Is there anything in the fridge? Blood bag. Um, I'll leave it there for now. I don't know why we have full boxes of pizzas here. Uh, we can listen to the radio. Um, there's basically a... Um, a uh, Not a DJ, like a talk show that goes on for a few minutes. Um, it is pretty funny. The And it kind of gives you like updates. And uh, actually, you know what? Let's listen to it. Hello, LA. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to The Deb of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and leave first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Actually, I'm gonna see if I can raise the dialogue audio. Nope. Cannot. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Actually, sorry. Let me see if I can... ...do... Subtitles are already on. I was I was looking for subtitles. But... You're lucky. Caller, you've got the first shot at Deb tonight. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, Deb. This is, uh, Vigo. Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working the late shift here at the uh, yacht club. Uh -huh. How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is, uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Um, yes. Arrivederci, Vigo. Caller two, you're on the dub of night. Be gentle. I am. Hello, caller. I am. Is tonight a rerun? Deb. Caller number three, what's keeping you up tonight? Deb, listen to me, Deb. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report the stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Conspiracy? This goes beyond conspiracy, okay? There's no word for something as devious and secret as this, you understand? The people need to hear this. They need to know the real story. You've got our undivided attention. All right. As we all know, the Americans established a moon base back in the late 70s. That's no secret. But what most people don't know is that they have been conducting a dig. Not for resources, but for artifacts. I see. Well, it's no coincidence that the Chinese have started conducting space missions. You know why? I'll tell you why. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from finding an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans, a.k.a. the Greys, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Fascinating. The American government's been putting more money into space. Don't you see what's happening? I can't believe I'm the only one that's figured it out. Am I the only person alive that can see what's going on? It's because the Andromedans and the Betas are going to be fighting their war in this galaxy through us, Deb. And the American people, the people of Earth, you people, cannot let this happen. It's Moo versus Atlantis all over again. Thank you, Gomez. And that concludes the news portion of the show. Well, this girl's got to pay her bill, so it's time for a few commercials. But don't go anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up. Or should I say hot? Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken-flavored products. Let's listen for which one they preferred. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Ugh! Oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, try this. Oh! Oh! This is some good f chicken! What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure! Um... Mm. Oh, oh. Seriously, drop these up your ass. Here. Try this one. Mmm. Hey. Mmm. Motherfucking great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy fuck. Fuck, that's good. What the fuck is this shit? Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good fucking chicken. I mean, 
Friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken. You'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie and the talking pig and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally mute object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a glandular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! <laughs> She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. <laughs> Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She wasn't like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm gonna have to make a deposit. <laughs> Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 in the BMC. Say goodbye to yellow teeth and spots in your dirty dishes. It's incredible. Look at that shine. Your smile or these dinner plates. <laughs> Harnessing the secrets of ancient Egypt, now there's a dishwashing detergent so powerful, it doesn't just leave your dishes spotless, it actually whitens your teeth. Patented timely spirit toys remove caked on food and grease and remain on the plate to be absorbed into your food to clean your teeth while you eat. Dazitron, the dishwashing detergent of the future for cleaner plates and whiter teeth. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redmond to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Redmond has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. In a world where people live and die. Do you think you can just go in there and handle this by yourself? If that's what it takes, he was about to meet his greatest foe. Kill them all! All of them! And a girl. Hello. Hi. And a comic relief sidekick who won't make it to Act 3. I picked the wrong month to cancel my life insurance. No, don't say that. You're gonna make it. With a guy from that other movie that was slightly popular, and what's her name, from that show you sometimes watch. In a movie with two spectacular CGI battle sequences and an advertising campaign that will leave you no choice but to see this film. See it. Because it's a movie, and all your friends are going. In theaters Friday, and on DVD in three months. Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bed. Anyways, it just kind of loops from there. Um, sorry if I kind of subjected you to listening to that when you didn't want to. But um, a lot of like the backdrop uh, stuff going on is actually really hilarious. Akuna Coil. Pretty good band. And yet undiscovered family of sea creatures. Our top story tonight, a derelict ship found floating 10 miles off the Los Angeles coast earlier this morning was towed into the port of Los Angeles a few hours ago. The ship was spotted around midnight by fishermen who contacted the Coast Guard after their attempts to hail the ship proved futile. Coast Guard officials are releasing very little information right now, but have identified the vessel as the Elizabeth Dane. No word as of yet as to the whereabouts of the crew, though the Coast Guard are asking any ships that had contact with the Elizabeth Dane to assist them in their search. We'll have more on this story as it breaks. In other news, an apparent third victim of the Southland slasher has prompted the closing of the Santa Monica Pier, where the body was found earlier tonight. Investigators say the scene closely mirrors those of slayings in Glendale and Long Beach. In both cases, the bodies of the victims were described as torn apart, though details are being withheld from the public at this time. Police urge anyone with information relating to this case to contact them. Actor Ash Rivers is lucky to be alive after his car crashed into the gate at Parasite Studios earlier tonight. Witnesses say that they were shocked when the Negative Zero star emerged unscathed and apparently unfazed by his high-speed accident. 
Rivers' agent released a statement stating that Rivers' crash was due to a mechanical problem and that the studio is not pursuing legal action against Rivers for the trademark gate's destruction. Miraculously, this is the second crash Rivers has escaped unharmed in the last year. Our top story tonight, a dear... So, that stuff is actually important. It, it, you wouldn't think it, but the ship of the Elizabeth Dane, the, mur the murder going on, it's actually part of the story. So... What is this? At your convenience, please come and visit me in my home downtown. I leave you this. I leave you this to guide you. Dark blood, our curse, a light, this verse. Such power I sense in one so young. Come find me where burns the mystical sun. M. Strauss, Tamir Regent. Hey, the password for your computer is sunrise. Keep the cash in your drawer. It's yours. I dropped you an email with my address. Come on over after you get settled. Mercurio. So you have five emails and five are in red. So let's check our email. Uh, sunrise. Okay. So number one, a reminder. Mercurio will contact you when you arrive in Santa Monica. Waste no time in meeting with him. SL. Who is SL? We don't know. So next. Penis enlargement. Watch the girls come running. Call today. 1-800-555-STICK. From Arthur at Dirt Cheap Internet. Kilpatrick's Crime Pewter. Okay, so look for that lazy ass ex-husband. Or oh, looking for that lazy ass ex-husband who's late on his alimony payments. How about that jerk who knocked you up? Look no further. With Arthur Kilpatrick's amazing crime pewter... You can find almost anyone with a record, and these days, that's just about everyone. So come on down to Arthur's Kil Arthur Kilpatrick's Bail Bonds. If you got the deadbeat, we've got the technology to find him. So next, welcome from Mercurio. Hey, welcome to town. Come on over to my place one, once you get situated, and we'll talk about what you'll need to get the job done. I'm going to pick up explosives right now, some Astrolite. I should be back by the time you come over. I'm at 24 Main Street, number 4. Walk to the end of the alley, and my building is the next one on the right. M. Subject, the opening from a friend. The game begins. A pawn is moved. Very mysterious. And it looks like that is all. The emails. Uh, okay. Okay. So he said there was some money in the drawer. Contains a hundred dollars. I'll take it. And there's nothing else going on, right? Yeah. All right. So let's get going. You can actually break into the other apartments, but I think you need a higher lock picking. Yeah. So we can always come back to it later. Whoops. Ellie's son. Carnival of Death. Gruesome remains found on the pier. P Police baffled. Yeah, see, our quest uh, got unlocked. Or updated, rather. Nothing in here, apparently. I'm sure if we have, like, a higher investigate or something, we can uh, find stuff in here. Yeah, again, this game is kind of floaty. Like, just pressing for, uh, the forward, it's like... Kind of, like, there's momentum, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, we'll, this is our mailbox. We'll actually find stuff in here from time to time. Okay. You got, you got some change, mister? Hmm... Sure. Actually, you know what? You hungry? I am too. We do seem to be alone in this alley. And I do need to feed a little bit. Oh, whoops. Okay. It'll be fine.
That's not good. Good God. Don't they have street cleaners around here? Uh, yes. Is there something I can, um, help you with? What are you doing? Waiting for that blasted tow truck I called an hour ago. I'd rather not wait another second in this part of town, this time of night. It's a rather dreadful place, don't you think? You should have listened to my mechanic. by German, he said. Could I persuade you to help me out? My wallet's been stolen. Afraid I'm a little short on cash right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I gotta actually seduce this guy. For what you're asking? For blood. Uh, I'll be on my way then. Of all the places to have car problems, I'm going to need a shower. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so you see there's a lady down there, another lady here. These are ladies of the night. You can actually pay them to go down an alley with you for uh, some shenanigans, but you just end up, you know, sucking their blood. Hello, office Ossifer. Uh, I'm not doing nothing. You doing all right? Yeah? You, you okay? It's okay. I'm... I, I'm oh, and I want to talk to you. I'm going to bathe when I get home. Anyway. Let's see what's going on here. <laughs> that guy does not look good. Those mothers ripped me off. I'm dying here. Oh. Uh, are you Mercurio? Yeah. You looking for the astrolite? I'm... Oh! I can feel a draft on my fucking insides. They shanked me. The bastards. The blood ain't working no more. My head, it feels cracked. Oh, I think my eyes popped. Uh... You want me to call an ambulance? What? No. I got a record back east. I'm heat day. Don't touch that phone. No goddamn cops. All right, what happened to you? I got... I went... Uh, what is this lump? Is this my rib? Oh, holy shit. My rib is poking through my side? Oh, I'm all numb. You gotta look and tell me. Yep, that's a rib. I still got five minutes to lift, tops. I'm lying here bleeding to death, and you're cracking wise? I don't need this crap. <laughs> okay, okay. Just tell me who did this to you. Goddamn chemist. Can't trust any operators in LA. I verified him. Organizations seem reliable. Guy mixes up speed. His crew sells it. Occasionally does explosives. I set up a drop. I show up at the beach with the money, right? Four of his guys, they come out of nowhere. Junkie pricks hit me with a bat. <coughs> it feels like I got a friggin' horse kick in it. I never should have gone alone. Amateur move. I should have handled those pricks. Goddamn dirty Cali rat bastards. Those cocksuckers. Beat me rotten, left me for a stiff. I had to crawl to my car, crawl my ass up here. The vamp blood's the only thing holding me together. But shit, they got the money, they got the astrolite. Vamp blood? Right, you're straight off the bus. Once a month I get fed vampire blood. Heals me faster, makes me stronger than a normal human. I don't age. By looking at me you wouldn't realize it, but I'm almost 60. So where do I find the astrolite now? Those small-time sons of bitches live out in a dump on the beach. Four or five of them. And one's got the explosives is Dennis. Got my money, too, that prick. How do I get there? Laying in a pool in my own blood, and you want friggin' directions. Right, all right. Uh, down the street, in the parking garage, stairs down to the beach. On the right. <clears throat> Those better not be some of my last words. Anything else? You gotta... You gotta get it back from them. Maybe reason with him. Maybe break in. I don't know. No, I want to kill him. Do whatever you people do. I blew it, I know. Is there anything I can do to help you? Yeah, if you could... Oh, something just started leaking. I need something for the pain. Uh, I'll bring something back for you. Uh, one more thing. About the deal. 
I mean it. You tell anyone about this, I'm dead. I'm begging you. I got a way of getting people what they need. You don't say anything, I can help you out. Good to know. So, you actually have a few options here. You can actually, um, you know, go and get the astrolite, the, the bomb, uh, for wherever this guy uh, says it is, right? Uh, you can actually choose to save him. Uh, like, give him, uh, I think you need to bring him some, some kind of medicine. Yeah, Mercury's in need of some serious painkillers. So if you don't bring him painkillers, I believe he dies. Um, and even telling the, talking to the prince later, if you tell the prince what went on, like Mercurio fucked up, Mercurio will die. Uh, but otherwise he's actually, I forget what he does for you. Mercurio? Try not to die. So you actually have, I think, a, a fairly limited amount of time to find the painkillers and bring them to them. I completely f forgot where they were. I don't even remember. I don't remember if you have, if you find them or if you can buy them. Okay, so that's basically the start of our missions. Um, we can look around uh, the rest of Santa Monica next time, because I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here. Santa Monica Hub, yeah. So this is again pretty much right where we start, uh, like really truly start the game uh, story. All the different side quests that go on. Um, we're going to be meeting some really cool characters very soon. And um, one of the best characters uh, of the game is, is going to be coming up very, very soon. And you, you'll know this person when you, when you meet them. It's going to be great. Uh, but I'm actually really happy I started this game again. Um, again, this is all in anticipation of Bloodlines number two. I highly doubt it's going to be related. Um, but one thing I actually wanted to point out, which I, I didn't last time, all the characters that we meet uh, in this game, uh, well, 90% of the characters that we, in terms of like vampires, um, they're actually canon in terms of like the books uh, at the time. I believe it was third edition. Um, the characters are actually canon. The story isn't, but the prince, uh, LaCroix, and his sheriff, like that big gangrel motherfucker with like the drags and like that buster sword. Um, Jack, Smiling Jack, all these guys, they're canon. You can actually find them in the books. You can learn all about like what's going on in this era. Uh, with the, I, I, again, I believe it's third edition. And all the other characters we meet, they're, they're in the books. Uh, whether they're still canon nowadays, I'm not entirely sure. Again, I, I haven't really read much of 5th edition, let alone the lore. But that said, I'm pretty sure the new game is going to be based off of the 5th edition. So, well, we'll see. But, that's in the future. We gotta focus on this game for right now. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a great... I, I think it's going to be a really great playthrough. I really hope you guys stick around and watch the rest of it. In the meantime, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.